Making headlines tonight, the redevelopment of Spite Sound takes center stage at the latest IDAYS forum. The private sector told now is the time to invest in Barbados. The BWA's aggressive approach to clearing its backlog of repairs to mains is paying off. And coming up in sports, thieves hit the Barbados Pride squad, delaying their match with the Leavers. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. A Northern Task Force set up to make recommendations on the development of Spitestown is to be re-established. This as the behest of Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley during the second IDAYS Forum held at the Alexandra School. Sharika Griffith has the details. You could get a ferry from Bridgetown, stop at Wharton at 20 US ahead and get spiced on make money. An impassioned Clement Armstrong, owner of Fisherman's Pub, gets the ball rolling with ideas on how Spitestown can become an heritage arts and cuisine hub. For more than three hours, St. Peter residents who filled the auditorium of the Alexandra School voiced their suggestions to a panel that includes Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley, MP Colin Jordan and Education Minister Santia Bradshaw. From the onset, Prime Minister Motley calls for the reinstitution of the Spitestown Task Force and asks Minister Jordan to spearhead that effort. I want the task force to recommend things that they want to see by the end of June. Now, without prejudice to that, I think that there is merit in Spitestown becoming a one-way and allowing for more pedestrian activity, in other words, better sidewalks, better street lights, all of those things. In response to a question from moderator Jamila Burgess, St. Peter MP Colin Jordan agrees that there is scope for the buildings which once housed the Alma Paris School to be transformed to a school of excellence in arts and cuisine. It would do a number of things. We need to bring activity back to Spitestown. And that is one area where we can bring activity to spice. So if we have a campus of 200 students in Spitestown every day for three terms, then we have a lot of activity in the town. Architect and businessman Larry Warren believes the return of overhanging verandas and residents in the heart of the northern town would help restore some of its original charm. He also wants government to address a number of derelict buildings. No, Roach's building is a real shame that it is nothing's happened to it. Yeah. And, and we, don't, we don't fully appreciate that this building is falling apart in front of our eyes because the top floors are not waterproof and they're deteriorating. The post office is another one. That definitely needs to, government needs to turn that over to private enterprise and to, and to drive that along. A number of students from the Alexandra and Coleridge and Paris schools also make contributions, including Zarik Thompson, an aspiring lawyer. I wholeheartedly believe that a Spitestone Heritage Night, preferably Friday, should be implemented. I envision a line where there would be various Bajan cuisine, local DJs and live and recorded music. A night where persons could come out after work to enjoy themselves and release the stress. It will be an option instead of going to all things. A Spitestown festival similar to those held in other towns and an inter-school competition involving games such as Wari are also among the suggestions put forward. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Investors are being told that this is the time to pump their money into the economy. It comes from Senior Technical Advisor to Government, Dr. Kevin Greenwich. He was one of the speakers at the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industries' first business luncheon for the year at the Hilton Barbados. You have build back capacity at the Revenue Authority, at wherever, continue to do that. And then continue, as the private sector side, your role is to invest. I would say this is the best opportunity to invest. You know, you know about the stock markets, you know they even had the slump, the um, financial crisis, and the rich and people who had the money got in and bought houses early. Now we are, uh, this is the time to invest, this is the time to get in and buy it. This is the time to, to build, expand, think business-wise, and that's how we're going to grow this economy. 
The Barbados Water Authority is on a mission to improve service delivery across the island by addressing thousands of complaints in its extended hours repairs program. Aliyah Briggs reports. Over the past 10 weeks, just about 6,000 complaints, including burst mains, have been addressed. Director of Engineering of the Barbados Water Authority, Charles Leslie, says the Extended Hours Repairs Program was introduced to deal with a backlog of close to 11,000 complaints. Repeated complaints as well coming in from the public. Um, and we wanted to address that because we were not addressing some of the issues in a timely manner. So we, we sat together with the Barbados Workers Union um, representatives and the, the, the workers and conceptualized this program. According to the head of the Barbados Workers Union Division at the BWA, Carl Boyce, with extended work hours and increased labor force, workers are now better equipped to respond to the high volume of complaints. He says the union, the BWA and the Water Resources Ministry are working together to improve service delivery. We put our ideas on the table. Those ideas have been accepted put into operation and today we can say that the burst rates across Barbados have decreased. Now we know that we had a little shortage of um, materials and labor and thanks to the minister those were put to rest. So we have the teams now that could carry out the jobs that we want, the service. So going forward you will see that um, all the calls that we were getting, the duplication, all that we have cleared up. Because as I said, we want to deliver service and the union plays an integral part of this. This has been achieved in part through what Water Resources Minister Wilfred Abrams describes as significant improvements in union relations. He commends the BWA's management, workers and the union for their collaboration in planning and executing the program. The workers stepped up to the plate. They said, look, let us take this as our project. Let us cost the project, let us structure the project, let us plan the project, let us put together the teams, let us plan the scheduling, and let us deliver to you in a certain time frame. And we took a decision as management and the board to hands off and turn that process over to the workers. And as I said, we are exceedingly happy with the results that we have achieved. And I, I hope that this could be a template going forward. The Water Authority is also planning to introduce a system to prevent the backlog from reoccurring after the extended repairs program comes to an end on February 14. Aliyah Briggs, CBC News. Barbados is poised to make a significant advance in the treatment of keratoconus now that the Queen Elizabeth Hospital has acquired its first pentagram tomography machine. That $200,000 device was presented this morning by CIBC First Caribbean and Keratoconus Barbados. Keratoconus is a disorder of the eye which results in progressive thinning of the cornea. It may cause blurry vision, double vision, nearsightedness, astigmatism, and light sensitivity. President Roseanne Myers says the machine is just the first of several pending contributions from the group. At the end of the day, our objective to ensure that we resource the hospital is, I would say, 80% of the way. The second piece of equipment that we want to provide is a corneal cross-linking machine, which means that a child di diagnosed young on the Pentacam, we can monitor, monitor them on the Pentacam, but if they need that surgery to halt the progression and the bulging of the eye, they can get it free at the hospital, and that is our objective. And Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick notes the equipment will expand the hospital services. The problem of preventable blindness is not unique to Barbados or the Caribbean, but it is one of global proportions. As such, I hope that through the donation of this pentagram tomography machine, we can begin to better diagnose those afflicted by keratoconus and provide them with the ophthalmic care they desperately need. In related news, five young Barbadians are benefiting from free surgeries for keratoconus. Ms. Myers says the initiative stems from the group's arrangement with Dr. Nigel Barker, a consultant in the QEH's ophthalmology department. At one of our first meetings, we identified five children who had been suffering with the condition from their preteens who we felt we really needed to help. And uh, I have to thank Dr. Barker, who agreed he will 
do the surgeries on those five children and we can pay him whenever we can pay him. And that is the agreement that we had. Those children were operated on in September before school and on the first eye and they are well on their way to recovery so that they can get the second eye done. The Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology just got better looking. Last evening, in celebration of its 50th anniversary, Generations, a commemorative mural designed by Kevon Von Hall, was unveiled in dramatic fashion on the campus. It depicts the vision and mission of the SJPI, and the colorful shapes reveal images based on words like creativity, innovation, global, digital age, skills, and technology, to name a few. It also highlights disciplines within each division of the Institute. The mural was sponsored by the Caribbean Development Bank and unveiled by Education Minister Santia Bradshaw. She says the mural signals a new dawn for the SJPI. This mural, designed and painted by Mr. Kevon Hall, is a timeless piece of popular art which signals a proud celebration of these past 50 years. 50 years of producing tradesmen and technicians that are found in their numbers in every single industry on this island and some beyond these shores. The mural lit by solar power and so aptly entitled Generations playfully reflects the vision and mission of the Institute. It is intended to motivate future generations and all who view this work to be so inspired to contribute to their country's technological and developmental landscape. SJPI Principal Ian Drake says the institution responded to a call from Minister Bradshaw to make the campus less dull. He adds there will be more initiatives. We'll be rolling out some exciting technologies, disruptive technologies is my aim this year. I modernized and I transformed last year. And we're doing this disruptive technologies in June, hybrid electrics, 3D printing, body scanning. And these are not just things that you enjoy as the principal is saying. You're going to be hearing so much about them as the year unfolds. In an effort to reduce the number of tires stored at the mangrove landfill in St. Thomas, the Sanitation Service Authority will be moving to acquire a tire shredder in the coming months. This revelation from Chairman Senator Rudy Grant, who says provision for the specialized machinery is being made in the authority's budget for the next financial year. He says officials are intently working towards a solution. We have also been having discussions with our cement plant about the utilization of the akin. Um, the, the, the truth is the best option is to be able to burn those tires. And I want to give the public of Barbados the assurance that we are actively reviewing the options and we will take a decision very shortly with respect to how we will uh, be able to deal with that issue. Issue with a report from an international anti-corruption watchdog. Then a bit later in sports, the Barbados Pride robbed of today's start to their encounter with the Leewards. But before we get to all of that, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. The more alcohol a drink contains, the more will end up in your bloodstream. This tip is brought to you compliments Cooperators General Insurance, who fully supports the introduction of breathalyzer testing. Checking in with our regional neighbors now, Guyana is dismissing a report by anti-corruption watchdog Global Witness that calls on the government to renegotiate an oil license deal with Exxon. The report claims the inept negotiation of the 2016 production sharing agreement could have cost the country as much as 55 billion U.S. dollars. CARICOM nationals who feel they have experienced discrimination at the hands of immigration officers in Antigua and Barbuda are being urged to report it directly to the minister in charge. During his budget debate, Immigration Minister E.P. Green indicated that those who feel they have been mistreated should seek redress through the correct channels. Green says he's been getting alarming reports with some nationals claiming they have been told to go back where they come from. He says discrimination against CARICOM nationals at the hands of Antigua and Barbuda Department of Immigration will not be tolerated. He also threatened to deal harshly with any officers who indulge in such practice against people seeking services there. After Hurricane Dorian pummeled the Bahamas, displacing thousands in Abaco and Grand Bahama, the government is moving to close a shelter housing the majority of the remaining evacuees. We have a report from Our News. 
The Kendall GLI's Gym, which has housed hundreds of Hurricane Dorian survivors since September, will close at the end of the month, according to Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell, who said the gym will once again accommodate sporting activities. We were in discussions with two properties um, that was reduced to one. Those discussions continue, but we're making good progress, sufficient for me to be able to say that by the end of this month, we will be in a position to deactivate the Kendall GL Isaacs Gymnasium and make it available for its original intent, which is uh, sporting activities. In January, there were over 300 evacuees staying at the gym shelter, which was featured prominently in news headlines in recent months due to TB concerns and complaints of deteriorating conditions. Back in November, Campbell expressed hope that shelters would be closed by the holidays. However, the decision was made to keep them open a little longer. Once the gym shelter closes, Bahamas Academy will be the last shelter remaining.